Good morning, Stampers. We are going to try to do a Facebook Live video today. Um, if you are on and popping in with us, appreciate it if you'd let me know if even the sound is working. <laughs> we're, we're just winging it. Um, part of this is because I do do some videos. Often I, I do them non-live because I often have a small filter issue between my brain and my mouth. But also I have several customers and team that are not local. They're out of state. So they really like me to do these videos. And this is easier since they're unable to come to my class. So today's card, I wanted to do a, a really simple way to do watercoloring. Um, a lot of the cards that I do, uh, I do complex things, so I'm told, but to me they're just kind of winging it. So today I just wanted to do an easy one using a new stamp set called um, Good Morning Magnolia. This will be coming out in the June uh, catalog. Oh, hi Sandy! Oh yay, the sound is working. Thank you for joining me today. So this new stamp set is going to be coming out in the June catalog. You're going to love it. If um, you like learning different mixed medias and things, the easiest way to learn them is on large images like these flowers. And so this is what we're going to do with this one. So we're going to start. We're just going to jump right in and go with it with a piece of watercolor paper. This one is three and three quarter by five and we are going to grab our stamparatus because I can't live without it we're going to put our image in there I was going to do this with gold um, as you see the original sample is gold but guess what I ran out of gold foil paper so you know what together we're going to do this in copper because I think copper is elegant anyway and part of doing the embossing when you watercolor is it helps hold your water in place for you, which makes it bleed and do its. I know the magnolias are great, huh, Sandy? So we're going to take the large magnolia image. And I love these, uh, the new cling stamps. Um, before the end of the video, if I have a customer that I was going to show the easy way to get these cling images onto your stamps. If you remind me, I'll show you how to do that because I have a couple left in this stamp I haven't put on there. I'm going to set this off to one side because I want to use a greeting with it. And in the greeting is another new set called Daisy Lane and this beautiful uh, written sign of friend. And I want to use that one on this. Um, if I have dog hair, okay, if you all have fur babies, if you don't have a project that gets hair in it, it's just not normal. So I'm going to line these up, pick them up, hopefully I'm in there close enough. I'll zoom in just a little bit on this for you, see if it'll help. Let's try that. So I'm going to line that up. I do like using, even though especially on watercolor paper, use your embossing buddy. Um, the watercolor paper is coarse, so it tends to pick up extra that you don't want. So we're just going to go over it a little bit with our embossing buddy. And I just inked up my new Versamark. So we're going to ink this really well with the Versamark. it nice and moist because it is a textured paper so the juicier your Versamark is the better it turns out and then as a matter of fact I'm going to do it one more time just to make sure I've got a nice coating on there
There we go. So now, we can remove it from here. Set this aside. I'm just going to use a scrap piece of paper for my embossing. And we're going to, like I said, instead of gold, we're going to use copper. So together, we're going to see how that turns out. But I'm a copper fan, so as far as I'm concerned, you can't go wrong if you're using copper embossing or copper foils. Tap it off a little. See how it picks up a little bit extra? That's why you really have to use your embossing buddy. Just make sure we've got a nice coat on there. Move this aside. And we're going to heat set it. Should have used my embossing buddy just a little bit more. But I think this is going to be okay. I've got a couple little tiny strays. It's probably not even going to show on film. I just kind of like it copper embossed. You don't have to do anything to it. Just put it on a card and go with it. Now your watercolor paper is thicker, so it takes a little bit more to get your embossing to melt. Because it's thicker. But it will melt. Can you guys hear my dogs barking in the back? They don't like closed doors, and they close the door to my room. They don't deal with rejection well. Now, the fun part about doing it with embossing powder is it tends to hold your water where you need it for water coloring. So, for colors, I'm going to use Granny Apple Green. And you just squeeze your pad and get some ink into your lid. We're also going to use Tranquil Tide, which I just love the deep color of Tranquil Tide. And we're going to start with our leaves first. So we're using an aqua painter. When you buy these, you get two in a package, and one has a, a wider tip, one has a thinner tip. I tend to use the little bit thinner tip because I have more room to uh, work more detailed. So we're just going to take, and you're going to squeeze a little bit of your aqua painter and put water in your leaves. So stay within your embossing powder. Let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit for you so you can watch what I'm doing here. Let's try that. So we're going to Fill in our leaves with the water. Let it pool up. You'll see that it'll naturally pool around the embossing. And I'm going to go ahead and do all the leaves. And that'll give the watercolor paper a chance to start absorbing some of the water. Because when you work with the water, you want to keep your, your project wet. Because then you can move your color around more. So we're going to go ahead and put water in each of these leaves. I'll come in just a little bit farther for you so you can see how that pulls. Let's see if that works. So then I'm going to take my darkest color and I'm just going to go into the lid a little bit here and pick up a little bit of my green. Now keep a baby wipe or a paper towel on hand so you can tap off if you need to. And then we're just going to touch where, see how the, with the water already there? It's just going to bleed it out just a little bit. Let me see if I'm in camera here because I zoomed in. So we're just going to touch where it's going to be the darkest area, which is normally going to be around your, your stem, edge, and your edges. And we're just going to barely tap that. And you're going to see that the water is going to carry the color 
on the leaf. So we're going to go along the edge here. Make sure you have water in there and it'll automatically bleed for you. You really don't have to do a lot of blending. So you're going to touch where you want your darker area. Let it bleed out. And it's automatically going to do the color for you. Now, this works, these obviously, with regular ink cats. When you're dealing with regular watercolors, you have a lot more give and take of how you manipulate your colors. Because when you add water, it's going to pick it up. When you remove water, it's going to make it darker. Now, using regular ink pads, you really need to keep your project somewhat wet because it will stain the paper right away. So we've got our dark in there. I'm going to add one more dark right here along the edge of the flower where my shadow is going to be. And now we're going to pick up a little bit of the granny apple green. So make sure you wipe off your your um, I just lost the name of that. Your water pen. Your oh my goodness. Anyway, so now we're going to take into the lighter areas. And if you need to, squeeze your pen just a little bit and let water flow. And it's automatically going to blend in to your darker green. Isn't that a pretty green? Now see I went out? Just grab it with your baby wipe and it'll pick it right up. So we're going to let that set. Go on to the next one. And in the areas we didn't have the darker green, add the lighter green. And it's automatically going to blend together. Boy, I just can't even color in the lines today now, can I? I'm really nervous. I, do, I don't do Facebook Live. And I have so many of my customers that are wanting me to do more videos. And Facebook Live is faster. So I just need to learn to do it. And I guess apologize if I make a faux pas. But if you know me, Fupa is my middle name. So, so we're going to let that set. And that's going to become a really bright. And if you have too much and you want lighter, when you touch it with just the tip of your, see how it picks it up? So I want to take, and I'm going to add just while this is wet, I want a couple more dark highlights right here. So I'm just going to pick up a little bit more of the Tranquil Tide. And I'm going to touch where I want just a little more darker accent. And the water's going to bleed it out. And cause and create the double colors. I really like the Tranquil Tide and the Granny Apple Green together. When it dries, it's, it's really pretty. It, because the Tranquil Tide kind of has a little bluish tint to it. Hi from Florida. Hi Rhonda. I hope you're having better weather than we are. We cannot stay warm. It gets goes from snow to 70 and it's a little difficult to cope with. A lot of my friends have a cold because of it. So I just figured I'd stay in and craft today because it's kind of chilly. And the alternative would be I go out and mow my lawn. Yeah. No. Let's craft. So now for this for the flower itself, let me get the fur baby off. I have little fur babies. Um, I actually have very fur fur babies. They're Pomeranians. Oh, Tucson, Arizona. Hello, Barbara. All right. We are going to use this Rococo Rose. This is one of the new in colors coming. I know that in the pictures, it... It just doesn't do it justice. A lot of people were kind of complaining about the colors this year. But let me tell you, I just got all the new ink pads. Because as a demo, you can order early. And I went to on stage. The colors in the pictures don't do them justice. They're absolutely beautiful. And this Rococo Rose is one of them. So I put a little bit of ink in the lid. And now we're going to get our rose all nice and wet. 
get my water to come out of my pen. And the, the good thing about doing watercolor when you've embossed is it holds your water in place. And you can also do this if you white embossed or uh, clear embossed. It'll kind of give you that, um, and I just lost the word, um, lineless watercolor look. Which is a really trendy thing right now is the whole lineless watercolor. So I want to make sure I have plenty of water in there. Now I'm going to pick up my ink from my ink pad. And I'm going to touch my darkest areas first and let it bleed out. Which is normally going to be the middle. And right along the edges is where your darkest colors are. Okay, I'm going to use my little corner and pick up some of my water so that I can have the lighter accent where I want it. And you can always add more water. I mean, but I want this to be a really faint kind of pink with highlights because I looked up pictures of magnolias because I don't know what a magnolia tree really looks like. And a lot of them are uh, white with a real faint pink or blue. So I kind of went with this. So now as it dries, and if your paper will start to curl a little, you can just push it down. Your other um, thing you can do is if you're worried about it curling up too much, waiting for it to dry, is take removable tape. Uh, painter's tape. Uh, get the trim tape and tape your image down and it'll hold it flat. But today was just really quick so I'm not too worried about it. I'm not getting it super soaked. So I'm just taking and going into my dark areas again and letting it bleed out a little bit. Don't really need a lot on it because you want it kind of fainted, faded, faint, fainted. Okay, I'll make up my own words too in this live. So you just tap it off. Use just a, just the corner of your, and it'll pick up the water. You just barely need to touch it. And there you go. You're done. I do another trick on my on all of almost all my images that I color with um, either markers or watercolor or whatnot is I add a shadow around my images and I'm gonna use balmy blue for that and what it does when you add a shadow around your image I don't know if it'll show on here it kind of brings your image out to be more 3d and you can do that with your blends or whatever you just want to use a really faint color around your edges use a really light gray or a really light blue and I thought adding the blue to this also kind of uh, adds more of the watercolor effect so I'm going to go right along the outside edge and add water oops I picked up a little green so I can just pick that up try not to get into my leaves because I want them to dry solid so you're going right along the edge around your image. It doesn't have to be precise. And as you see, I picked up some green there so I can just dab it up. And then just take a little bit of your light balmy blue and then just touch right along the edge. And because you've got that water pooled, it's just going to bleed out on its own. There's no exact science to it. Just kind of dab it and touch it. And then just touch your edges. And it fades it out even more. And there you go. And we've got our image done. And while this is drying, we'll get the base ready. 
And I decided, since I was doing copper on this one, because I ran out of gold, we are going to use copper foil. And I decided to go with a rich razzleberry base. I thought it would really kind of pull out the pink there. So let me zoom out of here a little bit for you so you can see what I'm doing. When I use my trimmers, which I'm trying to find my trimmer now. So we know our card base is the A2, um, five and a half by four and a quarter. So we want this a little bit smaller. i move my image while it's drying. And we'll probably end up hitting that image with the heat tool a little bit. So I'm going to do my five and I'll do one quarter inch smaller. So I'm going to do five and a quarter by four. And then I always um, trim out the inside so that, I mean, you don't, you're covering it. So you don't want to waste all that. So I just go about, I don't know quarter inch in, three quarter inch in, and I kind of just trim out the piece that I can save and use for something else. Doesn't have to be exact. So you're only, you're saving some of your, your foil paper there. So I'm going to glue this down. As, see, I wasn't even ready. My little hand glue is over on the other table. Uh, yes, I have a little hand that holds my glue. I'm a glue person. Um, a lot of people uh, use uh, tape. Um, I do sometimes, but I'm not very good at it. I like to use glue because it's forgiving. And you can move it around once you've laid it down. Now, a lot of times you'll want to use a good tape on your foil sheet. But see, I can shift a little bit to make sure it's square. You have a couple seconds while the glue is drying. Now, I'm going to heat set this a little bit. And since it was a really light watercolor, it didn't, um, it didn't warp the paper a lot, but when you dry it, it may come from the back side. Your heat tool kind of irons it out for you, too. I have an iron that I use in my craft space. But the only reason I'm not going to use it on this one to iron out my watercolor is it'll uh, um, pull up my uh, heat embossing. Now we want to make sure that we have Make sure you get all the way to your edges, whether you're using tape or glue, because the watercolor paper is a little bit warped when you use it. I guess I should make sure I'm putting that on. I did one upside down the other day. And of course, it went on perfectly the first time, so of course... That's why it went on upside down. There you go. And what you can do is lay something on here. A lot of times I'll just lay like an ink pad to make sure it glues down. But there's today's live video. Um, I may add bling kind of girl to my images. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to add... A couple little, I have some little copper sequins. And I'm going to grab my take your tick, take your pick tool. I'm going to probably add one here. Let's put a little bit of glue. Let's put one there. 
and maybe one there. If you don't have a take your pick tool, oh, you need one. It's a must. Look at that. Look how simple that is. Oops. And then I make myself a liar. Huh? Actually, it really is. It works great, you guys. It not working is my operator error. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the tool. It's me. There you go. There was a really quick watercolor project. Quick, simple. You can use the greeting for any card. Uh, get well. You can use it for birthday. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And happy stampin'. Thank you for joining me.